Hello, everybody, and welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 45. So we're going to go with Jeremy for the Bibcot NoGov license. Yes, as always, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the Bibcot No Government license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at bipcot.org. So today we have uh, Christopher Chase Rachels uh, coming in from Asheville, North Carolina. He's with the Voluntarist Initiative, and uh, he's going to talk about his book, A Spontaneous Order, The Capitalist Case for a Stateless Society. Uh, so he's a voluntarist and an anarcho-capitalist. Um, his main website, or you can find his work, is tviofavl.org. Um, and his book you can find on Mises.org and Amazon.com. So, um, Chase, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Danilo. And uh, just real quick, uh, that site that you put out there, that's for the uh, Voluntarist Initiative. So if anyone's right, right. interested in that, they can go to that website. You can find my work on YouTube or just, like you said, searching for my book on Amazon or Mises. Yeah, also your, your YouTube channel, right, and Cap Chase. It, it's right. uh, yeah, it's called ANCAP Radio. My uh, handle's ANCAP oh. Chase. But yeah, that's, oh, right, right. that's fine. Oh, yeah, I share your videos all the time. I love them. Oh, excellent. They're, awesome. they're, they're, they're what I call safe content. That I know <laughs> yeah. if, if I share that to someone new that they can dig through your videos and they're not going to find like an old video of you going like, ah, we need to kill all the Muslims and the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, well, you and Larkin, you, Larkin, um... Bastiat, a few other things. Those are people I share when when I get people, when I introduce them to the uh, you know f philosophy yeah, you of liberty. With, you can't go wrong with the animated videos, like the one uh, I think you have called like "What is Voluntarism," right? That uh, where, where you're you're narrating it. That's really really good one. Oh yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, I made that with uh, uh, Luke Bessie. He did the animation. That was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so many I people just... pretty a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all those animation videos are just uh, so so much. I think he's more easily digestible. If than, you if than, you uh, Google you know, voluntarism, if you Google voluntarism, that's the first video that pops up is his video. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> yeah, when you when you go to when look, I'll do it right now. Well, well that, let me get actually, out of DuckDuckGo. I, I've recently, I caught the meme bug recently, and I've been, I've been making a lot of memes, so I'm constantly search, you know, I'm constantly in Google searches searching for images, and I, I've actually noticed like if I had to search, if I search the term voluntarism under images, like your face actually ends up popping up there. Oh, wow. In the first, yes, yeah, <laughs> in like the in like the first twenty searches or so, they'll be like, you know, ANCAP flag, vo you know, voluntarism. When you Google hand, voluntarism, and, and then there's just a picture of Chase. <laughs> when you That's Google good. voluntarism, so handsome, then I guess. And you go to the video <laughs> results. Voluntarism by Luke Bessie is the number one result. Voluntarism, the non-aggression principle by ANCAP Chase is second. And an inductor, introduction to voluntarism by ANCAP Chase. So that is really good that that happens because we're telling so many people to Google it. And if they're clicking on those three videos, then I'm very comfortable with that. I don't feel like that they're going to you know, go down a... Yeah, I wouldn't want them to be, can't well be the first thing they start reading, you know. I'm not saying people aren't smart enough to see through his shit. It's just I don't want people to think that that's an accurate depiction of people who call themselves libertarian or voluntarist. Oh, no, I, I totally, totally understand for sure. Yeah, yeah so, so, so no, no, I was just going to say, so Chase, can you, can you go into your, uh, your book a little bit and just explain um, what it's about? Yeah, um, actually, let me talk about TBI first, and then we'll talk oh, about sure. it after if you don't sure, mind. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so basically, I know a lot of people have heard of uh, the Blue Ridge Liberty Project, and um, that's a liberty organization that I started uh, in 2012 with uh, someone else, and um, it was great for a while. Uh, it was about a volunteerism, peaceful parenting, just like the TBI is today. Um, but recently, uh, the other founder kind of wanted to go in a different direction, more anarcho primitivist thing. So. Most of us decided to kind of form our own new liberty organization called the Voluntarist Initiative. It's uh, more decentralized, uh, and it's also much more free market oriented. We're still promoting the peaceful parenting aspect as one of the best means to get to a free society. Uh, I know many of us are also into things like unschooling and uh, things of that nature. and. I don't know. Are you guys really? I know Danilo is, but are you two really familiar with peaceful parenting at all? Uh, I am. Yes, I, I have. I have four-year-old twins that uh, I am 
trying to raise as peacefully as possible, although they make it extremely difficult a lot of the times. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, you know, I, I, I am a big proponent of it. Um, I, I'm working, uh, I, you know, I, I do my best to, to work within the bounds of that. Um, and I, 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 too, I mean, I, I've espoused the similar ideas that I, I think it's, it's a key component moving forward that, it, that, you know, just whatever, however many people in a generation you can get doing that, it just makes the next generation even stronger. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely the, lo the long approach, but uh, I, I think uh, I definitely see its benefits. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a, uh, a necessary but not sufficient means to mm -hmm. achieving a free society yeah. it's a good way to put it yeah that's, that's i uh, good, i am a very, very way of putting it <laughs> i'm a very peaceful parent and in, in fact i'm so peaceful that i intend to never have kids or want kids <laughs> uh so i'll never actually have the uh, chance to not be a peaceful parent but well, unless there's an accident or, that happens but oops <laughs> so, that's that's how peaceful of a parent i am that's i might awesome. be the most peaceful parent then that I is a very that's involved. a very bold claim I wish more people were like that. They um, honestly ask themselves if they're prepared or willing to do what it takes to be a good, peaceful, and caring parent. And, uh, you know, some people have other ambitions and things which might be undermined or, or at least hindered by having kids. They take a lot of time, energy, and resources. Well, so well, 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 well humans, humans, we have this, we have so much figured out, right? Or at least we think we do. But we still have this thing that happens called shit. And uh, there's not really anything you can do to prepare for or properly, you know, fight against sometimes. It's just shit like, oh, hey, someone at the CDC forgot to wash up and now everyone's dead. You know, like <laughs> shit happens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shit definitely happens. But, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of what really separates us apart from most of the other liberty organizations out there is, first of all, we are explicitly voluntarist. We are explicitly not involved in any sort of uh, working within the system to shrink it from within. We don't we don't engage in any sort of political uh, campaigning or anything of that sort. And we also don't like to engage in any sort of the uh, antagonistic uh, activism. Not to say that there's not a you know a place for that or you know, mm -hmm. I respect any sort of activism for liberty that's you know not violating the aggression principle. But um, as far as you know trying to pick a fight we don't do that kind of thing we do more of education outreach uh peaceful parenting play dates uh we we've had some people come over here and give talks like adam kokash we want to do more of that in the future um well you can have me come up and talk about peaceful parenting it'd be very easy yeah you know just uh <laughs> you can have that approach that, you know unfortunately i don't hear that approach very often if you not ready to have kids or you don't want no any, no i it, it could be just there, my no. um it could just be my uh <laughs> unwillingness to want to raise someone in this godforsaken world at this moment <laughs> <laughs> or, or i i feel at this point you're 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 just putting people in danger if you're having babies <laughs> it's just bad right now <laughs> like i know everyone says it's getting better but like <laughs> oh if Oh, nuclear war could happen well, tomorrow. Well, I think that's the point of peaceful parenting is producing the next generation of peaceful, compassionate. I, I'm all I'm all for it. I just and, I don't want to have changing, a hand in, in changing it. Changing the way the world <laughs> is right now, and I mean I think we're already on a on a progression towards being more peaceful as a society in general, as a, as a general you know human community. It's, it's more peaceful than ever, more prosperous, more successful. Almost. I, I agree. I agree. It's just that. tensions that's are really thing. high. You know, like how how was the world stage at the end of the Bronze Age? You know, like we're at the end of an age right now, and collapse is good, is inevitable. So, <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't know. It's just so it's so a catch time. too, right? To kind of usher in a better, more enlightened age, we gotta help inculcate our children with rational and peaceful and compassionate values and you can't do that unless you have them right but then again like you said things are kind of in a lot of ways uh very We're not always and like 50s right now, and, so. and 80s 50s would oh. probably be the best time to have a, a 50s in america probably what the best time you know p most peaceful yeah. like nothing happened forever <laughs> like you could live and die a 50 year life and i don't i don't i don't think you could point to any point and say it was necessarily more peaceful well obviously I think it's very Danilo, subjective well, no Danilo, it's well no not not even about it being subjective then i think the nilo is closer to the to the reality on that that it that it ha is progressively getting more it is getting more peaceful it is all the, the, the what's yeah. going on in the, what's going on in the world stage 
is become it has become more and more contrived. I had and a. Yeah, I, I want to go on a. I want to go on a massive tangent people. right now. I want to go on a massive no, please tangent. Don't. Please, can please I let me. For a second, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say that I. Go, I, go know, ahead, I, y'all are talking I, about parenting. People and people in general don't. You know that that's. The, I mean, we we we've talked about this before. Most people in general live a very, or at least prefer to live a very voluntary lifestyle, and they prefer to live a more anarchic lifestyle. They just want to be left alone. Mm-hmm. That's the majority of the world. Just unfortunately, that same majority is not being allowed to in a lot of situations. But on the whole, people in general are are, are peaceful, and that you can see that with like the violent crime drop, you know, rate, rates of you know crime dropping, um, despite all the all the fear mongering that goes on here over the last what is it forty years? Like the drop has been, you know, it's not it's not insignificant. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it's just not as visible, right? Like the fear mongering yeah, is what gets the more exactly. the more ratings. So they do they focus on that stuff, which makes it seem like the world's getting progressively worse when the truth is the opposite, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, yeah, well, yeah no, no, you're, you're right. I mean, the world is getting better as far as like uh, quality of life for everyone. But, you know, like I said, tensions are really high right now. That's like my only skepticism of the whole situation. You know, everything looks like, regardless of what the news says, everything looks like on the downward trend as, uh, downward trend as far as violence and poverty and all this. But, you know, <laughs> you know, the dollar collapses and we'll see what, what everything looks like. You yeah, know? That's going to suck. You know what I'm saying? Like, so like, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to birth a kid uh, and and have a newborn during a currency collapse, just in a pragmatic uh, view on the, on the subject. Yeah, I can understand that for for sure. Absolutely. There's going to be a time to where the malinvestment needs to liquidate and there's an interim time to where the economy is reorienting itself. And during that time, it's going to be really shitty for most people. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people are going to (laughs) starve. So hopefully not. Hopefully yes. Bitcoin can save the whole situation. Hopefully, <laughs> I hope. Yeah, I would be comfortable with that. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, I'm reading a uh, Connor Boyack's book right now, Feardom, and it's a great book, just basically focusing on how um, you know politics and states in general have, has a foundation of fear and propaganda and deception and lies. And you know that's basically how the ruling class stays in power is by constantly instilling this attitude of, of fear your neighbor, fear the rich, you know, fear the the other uh, gender, fear this race, fear this religion, and you know it's constantly dividing people and weakening them, and and showing how the world is such a dangerous place, which is why you need protection and security by the benevolent government agents. Right. <laughs> right. I forgot one class to fear. Fear the Syscom too, right? Oh right. Lord, yeah, exactly. <laughs> God forbid. No, no, that's that's just that's just Uncle Sam. He's your he's family. Come on, he's just your uncle. Did you see my rant yesterday on the, the the black students that are wanting to segregate themselves? I don't understand the the logic. There are black schools. If you don't want to see a white face all day, you can go to a black school. I don't understand it, if that's what you want. But you, you know, want to segregate themselves? That's fine. Yeah. It's their prerogative, I guess. I understand <laughs> that. It just doesn't make sense yeah, I to me. Know. I said, I said, wait. So you're wanting to self segregate? Do you understand that like people died, so that wouldn't happen? Yes. <laughs> like, no, pe- no, people died because there was forced segregation. Voluntary segregation is a, is a completely different thing. People, bl- I think people blow this type of stuff out of proportion because they don't understand the difference. I, I think I hate it because it's collectivist and, and I honestly don't think anyone's ever going to get anywhere not looking past their own race and deciding and making everything about their race. Like who gives three fucks? And I might be a white guy what? saying that, but you know, whatever. <laughs> No, you are a white guy saying that. You know, there's no okay, if I was born one of no. Genghis Khan's son or something, you know, I would have ruled half the pasty, world. Pasty white so, guy, pasty. Uh, uh, oh no, that's right. I forgot. We for, we forgot. We learned last week that Dave has Indian in him. I forgot. I that's do right. have Indian in me, just like I do have Indian in you know, me. I, I'm from I, Alabama. I Everyone in Alabama has Indian from them if they're from Alabama. <laughs> I I empathize that a lot. I know that um, there's all this, uh, it's very popular to be a a feminist or to be very sensitive to quote unquote people of color and whatnot. To me, it's like, you know, the only, the only philosophy you need is individualism. You know, 
Yeah, but who cares about these unchosen characteristics? It's all about individual merits and character. And if you're an asshole, I don't care what color or gender you are. I don't want to associate with you. And, and well, if you're open minded and you're this wanting podcast, to, you're to be respectful here. towards things, then we're cool. You know, it's as simple as it has to be. But instead, we make all these false divisions by all these unchosen characteristics. And to me, it's ironic because I think that in itself is sexist and racist, if anything, trying to bring so much attention to that stuff and baiting it so much, you know? Right. Oh, it absolutely. Yeah. I it absolutely is. Um, I think. Uh, I, well, I mean, I, I I agree with you. I think you're right that it that they, these are unnecessary divides that cr- are created. But yeah. you know, follow following following along, you know, the vo- voluntary principles. It's freedom of association. Okay, if you want to be collectivist, go for it. You know, just oh, yeah. don't just don't. F- unfortunately, like the the groups you mentioned, like the modern versions of that, they. We, they use this. They they use the power of the state to get what they want. So right. it's not as simple as saying, "Well, yeah, you just do what you want. Just leave us alone." Because no, they're not leaving us alone. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, if people want to segregate and have their own covenant communities with that are discriminating one way or the other. That's you know that's totally their right and their prerogative. Mm-hmm. You know. Whatever. Oh, I totally see. Like if a if a volunteer society actually happened, I totally see like pure racial areas popping up where it's like whites only or blacks only or muslims only i totally see that happening well they're already totally, yeah, right it's already, yeah yeah it are yeah it happens right like now in towns and black neighborhoods and nation, you know, Italy. <laughs> well of course. yeah but now it's not now it's not exactly it, it people end up gravitating there but they're driven there by forces from the state in the first place so i don't know if you yeah. can exactly compare the two yeah um because like you know gentrification and 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 the reverse of that is all it was all caused by the state in the first place <laughs> um or perpetuated by the state so you know, but yeah i think I, again i think you're right Dave. There, there probably will be you know that that's that's why i take you don't think there will be a kkk land you're crazy i know too many <laughs> people know, well, well, exactly, but that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why that's why I've taken the the more panarchist approach for a very long time, and just you know, basically, you know, you my 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 line is, you know, you do anarchy your own way, and let me do it mine, and I don't care, you know, because yeah. yeah. there's gonna be there's got if if it, it, to take everything to its their you know the logical conclusions of allowing freedom for everybody as long as they are not initiating aggression well then you're going to have to put in order to take that to its ends you're going to have to recognize that you're going to have to most likely at the very least observe things that are going to bother the fuck out of you yeah but, absolutely you know and i actually you, wrote about the panarchy thing recently i think i wrote a uh, facebook note because i know it's been getting steam lately mm-hmm. and i'm totally cool with the idea however i recognize that in order for such a society to function, uh, private property rights, they have to take precedence. Because let's say that, you know, uh, a neighboring communist community, they don't recognize anyone's uh, exclusive claim to means of production, private claims mm-hmm. to means of production on land. So if it's like an overarching communist or a legal system, or even if there isn't an overarching system, there is nothing philosophically that they see um, wrong with just using my land or my resources without my consent or even taking them because in his eyes I don't own them and if I use force to defend them in his eyes that's aggression right so I think the only way for this to actually work and I think it can work is that there's an overarching uh, sort of ANCAP legal structure to where first and foremost private property rights are recognized and what's entailed by private property rights is that people want to pool their resources to form voluntary communist communities or mutualist communities or even primitivist, primitivist tribes or whatever have you, then that's totally their prerogative. And there's nothing that we would want to do to impose upon them or, or interfere with them. However, if you had any other sort of system, I feel like there wouldn't be any sort of incentive for these people or philosophical need for them to respect our private property rights because they view those as aggression in themselves you know of course saying? yeah that it, it comes down to property uh in the debate of course they for some reason seem to not realize that you cannot equally distribute property or something without force or <laughs> ensure that people don't own the means of production without force sure you know, you know, I heard some people try to justify um, socialism by saying, "Well, look at the family, right? Your your child, um, they demand, you know, and you, you give them stuff. They don't have to pay for it. Basically, it's for free. 
you know, and, uh, you know, everything in the family is commonly owned, right? So isn't that socialism? <laughs> and so yes. that's, one of, that's one of the ways that they justify, well, maybe we should do it for millions of people and force everybody, you know, <laughs> and well, they just expand it out. And, 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 and the way you I see, that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that show that really reveals your economic ignorance because on a very, very yeah. micro scale, like, you know, just, you know, four or five people, you can feasibly uh, have it be prosperous and... And I don't think any ANCAP makes that claim ever, that right, socialism right. cannot work uh, at at a degree of scale. A very micro scale, because it's just three or four people. You, you can uh, more, much more easily... Even if it was a bunch of families. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even if it was just a bunch of families. Desires. Yeah, Right, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But, so you know each yeah, other's so... needs and desires, but when you, when you expand out to like even dozens or hundreds or thousands right. of people right. there's too many moving pieces too many different desires that you, the only way to really understand how to optimize the allocation of resources you need private property you need money generated from a market so that you can compare different actions and their their uh, respective opportunity costs and you can't do that without a market without trade without without sound money it can't be consensually yeah, controlled and, and, you're right and if you assume that everybody is self-interested, you know, and, and is only looking out for protecting themselves or for, you know, get, you know, gaining resources and acquiring resources, and what incentive do they have to care about somebody in California? <laughs> then, then to me, in that way, that's why, um, you know, anarcho-capitalism is the preferred means for a uh, a prosperous society, because because what you you have to the basis has to be on self-interest, right? Every, Everybody is self-motivated for the most part. I mean, you can be charitable, you can give things away, but for the, for the most part, everybody must think about themselves first, <laughs> right? When you're on a plane, plane's going down, you think about yourself first, or else you die and then everyone else dies, or your child dies, right? So it always has to come down to the individual first, and then you worry about the people, right? You can only give things away until you have created them, right? So so production and creation is is foremost before charity and you know socialistic giving and you know absolutely. sharing and all that kind of stuff absolutely yeah yeah well yeah, yeah that's well. why you know even Karl marx said that communism has to piggyback off of capitalism because mm-hmm. communism doesn't create anything but problems and dead bodies hmm. so well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think i don't think that was his i don't think it was, it was his his vision no 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 i added the last part that was a dave right there at the end that's a no, no that's what we call that's what we call tra- I think that's what we call translation. Uh, nice. <laughs> Maybe in a thousand billion well, years, see, I don't know, I don't but, know. Well, I was just going to say just back to what you were saying just before Dale, that I mean that's why my argument always is that there's no such thing as as true altruism because everybody yeah. is, d- d- despite despite it all you're always there's always your self-interest that it always right. takes, you know, it always takes, you know, when people get people get mad about that when they think of it being selfish, well well, no, everybody is to a certain extent. It depends on your circumstances. Um, so, and I, I don't know. I mean, I, I agree with you guys what you're saying. I mean, I, I've I've made that argument too in the past that you know essentially you could have a ancom the you know the simplistic version is you can have an ancom society within an ancap society, but not the not the other way around. Um, and I, I would I would tend to agree that um, you uh, that. From my perspective, it makes the most sense that it's that's the overarching that an that an overarching theme of property rights probably would be the only way it could work. But then you run into the issue with these people that that don't want to do that. But yeah. you know, again, yeah. that like I said when I when I say when I say panarchy, I'm just I'm I'm just more of the opinion that I I'm not gonna I haven't settled on one in particular ideology. I guess um, you know I consider myself an ANCAP for a while, but I see the benefits as you were discussing Chase too about the. Uh, you know, socialism, communism, whatever, on a much smaller scale, I see the benefits there, and I see how it could, certain smaller societies could function with that, so, you know what, if it could work, great, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna knock yeah. it again, as, lo- yeah, sure. as, as, as long as you're not impeding on, on the community that I live in, and, and the rules that we agree to live by, then, you know, go yeah. nuts. <laughs> I totally agree, I totally, totally agree. Yeah. I, I get uh, some socialists that comment under my posts, and, and one of them uh, likes to give the example of if if a, a store owner you know has their you know their merchandise and their food and then you have somebody who's like hungry and starving and poor and steals food to feed themselves they ask me who's committing the aggression the store owner that's defending the thief 
or defending himself against the thief, and then the thief who's just trying to feed himself and being, you know, prevented from eating <laughs> because of that. Well, that's easy, the thief. <laughs> right, yeah, but, but, but it, it's, like, it's like that's the way they think. They're like, You well, don't want people to hungry. starve, do you, Danilo? Exactly. It's like this person's If hungry, we could just so save he's... one body. <laughs> so, so it's like all, all, all they see is like the natural state of man, which is, which is basically poverty. Like we're all born poor, right? But what? wealth and success, I think, is earned, right? Through our yes. actions, through, through our talents, through skills that we acquire. And, <laughs> and it's not easy. It's not enough to just say, because I'm hungry, feed me. Like give me food. Like we're all hungry every day. <laughs> I think what you're getting at is uh, production is necessarily antecedent to consumption. We have to first right. produce before we can consume. Whether or not it's right. we're the ones producing or someone else, someone has to produce, right? Right, right. And uh, capitalism and some money and free markets, they're really valuable because unlike other economic modes, they enable uh, rational economic calculation. And uh, that is the Achilles heel of socialism. And really, if I want people to starve, I'll just start promoting socialism. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's the best way right. to do it, right? Well, I'll be equally starving at least. And they tend to exalt egalitarianism over individual liberty. And I think uh, that's pretty clear. Yeah. Yeah, anyone preaching the collective should be ignored, in my opinion. <laughs> We, you know, Venezuela's been drove down a fucking into a nightmare because of so many people saying we, 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 not, hey, you, you guys should start getting self-sustaining. <laughs> they just need the right leaders, though, Dave. <laughs> we get somebody into power. If only the we Flint, Michigan perfect. politicians we just, were just so not <laughs> racist, you know. We just need a few more laws and if only they were just we had better leaders in flint michigan they wouldn't have poisoned it against the black people so much i don't know <laughs> i it's people that believe the collectivist lie will always believe it and they're gonna get they're gonna fall into the traps of it bread lines uh starvation famine death of children no one owes you Maybe. anything in this planet on this planet no one owes you anything at all. When you're born a baby, no one owes you anything except for the parents who put you in that position. Oh, I was going to say, I'm, gl I'm glad you I'm glad you amended it by saying that, because I was going to say, hold on a second, wait a minute. <laughs> well, well, you know, it's, even, even people that come from communist countries um, who defend communism, uh, I find that interesting because when I ask them, like, how their, their lifestyle was and what their job or their parents' jobs were, frequently, most often, they had a government job. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> those those resources that were used that were distributed equally amongst everybody had to be produced by somebody, right? There had to be some production. So everybody can't have really a government, you know, non-productive job. <laughs> so who is being stolen? That's the that's the thing I'm trying to figure out. Who is being stolen from, and and where was the mass murder occurring? <laughs> that's like my first question because it's kind of funny how these people, you know, you conveniently don't see it if you have a cushy government job and you're getting you know a nice pension a nice salary and meanwhile there you know there's like gypsies and other you know oppressed minority groups that are being destroyed and you know systematically annihilated and they're like oh well yeah, it's, not, think, it's not me it's not me so why am i going to think about I think, that i think technology and encryption is is getting rid of this ability for the state to control like how people rat on each other you know for like price controls because a lot of people don't realize how important price controls are to economic freedom and individual liberties as well. And uh, they don't really see how bad it really wrecks the economy when the government tries to price fix and control the market. Yeah. And uh, it, it's, it's it, technology is, you can't rat out somebody now. Everything, you can encrypt everything. <laughs> you can you can do whatever you want and no one could ever know it. And it's, 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 like I posted something today on Facebook, I think technology is fast. It's it's working at a pace at this point that government can't keep up to turn it into a boondoggle or a lagging indicator. At this point, if you think anyone in the American government has any detach any attachment to people that are, I would say under twenty at this point, they're clueless. <laughs> they're not even on the same planet. No, that's great. Yeah. I do think that the internet, and I even mentioned this in my book, uh, utilizing hacktivism and the internet as a way to circumvent a lot of state controls and regulations is 
going to be absolutely essential uh, to really bringing about a freer society and to educating others. Like it's, I'm so happy to be living this age, this information age, to where these sort of connections are possible. We can talk to each other right now, recording four different people at the same time, uh, all living in different locations, and then we're gonna post this to YouTube where anyone in the world could watch it. Well, I know there's some places that censor things, but <laughs> most people, you know, <laughs> in the world. So it's just, it's, it's really encouraging, and I think there's a lot of uh, reason to have some hope for the future. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I, I would agree because uh, I mean we I mean we do we we talk about it all the time. I mean I I I, I try to temper it by saying it's also you know it's it, it it can be it it can be you know the collective our great savior, but it could also it could also destroy us just as quickly. It just depends on who gets who gets their hands on what technology first, essentially. So there's there's always a threat, but you know what Dave said is is essentially playing out over and over again. It's you know the the whole the whole reason there are people out there trying to stop hackers is because the hackers are always one step ahead. Yeah, that's just kind of how it works. <laughs> you know, they were first to market, and uh, <laughs> the state and even 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 private you know pri even private um, encryption agencies or you know computing what? agencies or whatever. The head of the FBI didn't even have his his email fucking protected <laughs> and was hacked that easy. What? <laughs> What? The, the, they're, they're always they're 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 most likely well, I, I hate to make the absolute but they're most likely going to always be one step ahead so that that's the you know and exactly it's 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 it is it is a great it's i mean in in some ways there's a there's a heck of a lot of oppression going on which kind of sucks to have to live through but on the flip side like you said you know it, it, it is a it's a very opportune time it's you know we we have these tools at our disposal and why the heck should we not be using them um, I mean, that's why we do what we do here. That's why, you know, all the all the different content that all, that all of us produce. I mean, I think that's that's kind of our goal is just to get it out there in front of as many eyes, you know, in front of in, yeah. in as many hands as we can. And uh, this is the ultimate delivery system. Yeah, uh, I mean, and I, I, mean, I think just... the, I think the difference is too is that uh, the asymmetry of the power, like the disparity in power, I should say, mm -hmm. between our cyber abilities as private citizens. And our armaments, like armament wise, you know, we're outgunned by the government. Okay, yeah, they, they're gonna outgun us. They got jets, they got tanks, they got, you know, cruise missiles and whatnot. However, when it comes to cyberspace, we are clearly on par, if not much more competent and powerful than they are. So, yeah, it's, it's probably very scary for them. And yeah, it's gonna be, like you said, it's gonna be the vehicle for change, I think, or at least one of the, the main ones. Yeah. Well, and, I, I would, I, oh, go ahead. I, no, no, go ahead. I was gonna say, and hopefully through this vehicle, we can avert a violent revolution, if yep. at all possible. That's the goal. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, it, I think it's true that the the government is definitely, um, you know, the monopoly of violence and out outguns, um, you know, the people on the whole. But I think that um, you know, ideas are more powerful than guns and bullets, right? Because you always need people to pull the triggers, right? And their motivation is only this idea of statism, that there is authority, that there's people in control, and they have the power, and I have to obey orders, right? So if we can use the power of ideas to send a message to them and change their thought process, mm -hmm. It, they're powerless. That's it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> authority is an illusion. It's a lie. You know, they're, they they are they are not different from us in, in many ways. They are much much worse, wicked scum than, than most people. You know, the the kinds of people that are attracted to power are the the truly wretched criminals. You know, no no individual criminal can compete with a with a politician. <laughs> Any kind of poli you know. Um, po political, um, uh, you know, individual and have that, people that cheer him for it. Right, cheer them right. for it. You know, it's like go yeah. Bush, kill those yeah, and, people. And it's, and it's so sad when I talk about <laughs> anarchy and the abolition of of statism, and people are afraid. Well, what you know, they give you this individual situation. Well, what if there's a serial killer and then a dark alley, and you know, you're alone, and who's gonna protect? So I'm like, wait, are you seriously afraid of that? And and and. And the drone strikes and the war on terror and and the NDA yeah, that doesn't frighten you, but <laughs> well, I think that's a I think that's a great segue into my book. Um, like you said, you always get the questions, right? How would the roads work? How would the uh, law and order work without a, a central state? What about uh, security and the national defense and 
education and poverty, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, that's, that's a big, that was a big incentive and reason for me to make this book is because I searched high and low and I couldn't find a really satisfying single uh, uh, book or piece of literature that had answers to all these questions. And I think the closest approximation was like uh, uh, Murray Rothbard's uh, For a New Liberty and probably even less of an approximation was uh, Stefan Molyneux's Practical Anarchy, which just wasn't rigorous enough to my satisfaction. So I'm like, okay, well, let me take all the best arguments from the best people on each different topic and put it all in one source. And I don't take for granted anything that anyone knows. I don't take for granted I know anything about politics or philosophy or economics. I define and explain everything and it builds upon itself. It starts from fundamental principles, provides a rational proof for them, not just saying, here's the NAP, accept it, but here's why. And then it just extrapolates from there and applies it to all the different complex social issues that we have to face with. So I'm pretty, I think that people are seeing this a lot and they're pretty happy with it. And I'm definitely happy to have provided it. And I don't know, I, I, I'm really interested to see where it goes in the future. and. Uh, I am working on an audiobook right now. I've been posting videos for free. Uh, Mises just put it on their website for free. And uh, again, uh, I think these are, this is the kind of content that we're going to need to give to people because they don't want to, you know, read Man, Economy, and State off the bat. You know what I'm saying? It's a thousand-page tome. <laughs> they want to kind of have a, a quick reference they can reference to and say, well, here's the argument I actually have. What about the cops? Okay, here we go. Boom. Here it is, you know. Very so cool. I think that's the kind of approach that we could really benefit I, 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 I think you can't claim success until your book is banned um, by the uh, what is it the um, is it the, the Department of Defense or something that, that Adam Kokesh's book is banned, is banned in prison or something <laughs> no, right? it was I think it's it the DOJ right yeah yeah, DOJ. yeah right yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think, I think that you should set that as your goal your mission <laughs> <laughs> sure well and I think well, the reason he had a lot more attention with that system is because he was actually in prison when he wrote it and you know yeah, he's I, Right, right, right. Da Danilo and his uh, go ahead. Danilo and his no true soul patching. <laughs> he was uh, yeah. He 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 was he he, he was much more uh, much more of a visible figure, I guess, before he even wrote the book. So right, because um, he was always getting himself into trouble. So yeah, that he would it would make sense that he would be more on their radar than any of the rest of us. Um, yeah. But I, I think so, those um, who kick the beehive get stung. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I should know I do it all the time, um, but uh, I I I think you're I think you're right though that it's, it's something like your book where it's you know like you said it's not lengthy I mean I, I admittedly I still have not read a man economy and state so <laughs> it's it, right. and it's not it's not even to me it's not even that the the length is daunting because I've read books that long before with with no issue it's just now at this point where everything else I've got I'm trying to juggle at once it's like where do I find time to now read it now that I'm like okay now I understand everything enough that I could read it and be like oh okay and probably pick up right. some insights but I can't find the time um right. but <laughs> people i mean we we do get i mean aside from the the questions of you know how would you how would this how would x happen or or how would x be handled um just even people just coming say you know people that you talk to people that you meet on the street people that you know that uh, you engage with on social media that you know i run into it all the time well they're asked well well do you have any reading suggestions or do you have where can i start basically and shorter stuff like that that's just very you know very succinct very to the point and and covers all that ground is excellent because unfortunately whether we whether we want to admit this or not and dave actually had a comment about this earlier day in, an, in another discussion we we're having about you know he was he was um discouraged about the lack of uh of people seeking intelligent conversation um but no i said i no, wished no. intelligent conversation uh went as viral as drama yeah, yeah, no. You were saying you, you were you were complaining about the lack of it and and not being appreciated, which I'm which I'm agreeing with. But unfortunately, the reality is we live in a Twitter and meme world right now. That's what that that's the attention span I'm just a of Luddite. the average individual. <laughs> I I am a luddite. I know, but that's 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 neither here nor there in this discussion. It's a it, it is we live in it we live in a you know we live we live in a in a I think a the longer world. and the more involved you are at the at, at social media the more you grow to disdain it. <laughs> so well, that happens with lots of things in my life. Well, you know, Chase, what, what Jeremy is saying is he wants you to compress 
No, uh, a I spontaneous order in, into one meme. <laughs> into a tweet. <laughs> into a tweet. Darn it. Can you no, can we get no. spontaneous order in 140 uh, characters? Into one meme. My my point was. <laughs> or is twit longer need, gonna have to be used? We absolutely need shorter, you know, works like this to be able to convey these points to people who have these short attention spans, yeah. you know, and and for the most part, the only real you know short pieces out there that cover. Even you know, like Adam's book covers a decent amount of stuff. Yeah. Um, although, as we discussed when we had uh, Cal Mo uh, Moline on, um, he still ends up ending ending up with a po with a political solution, which is just no. That oh that's no, he does. Oh shit. Well, no. <laughs> well, no. His whole idea is, is that you know he wants to. I mean, he he's just, he's talked about running in 2020 on, yeah. on the platform of a peaceful dis dissolution, right. and he swears up and down that he's just doing this for what Ron Paul supposedly was doing all the time, just to get the ideas out there. Has no intent on winning. But regardless, it's still off. Like his whole idea is localization, breaking it, just d dissolving the federal government and then working the, gov the, the state government slowly down to the local government. So it's still technically a political solution. It's still working from the inside. Um, you know, um, Larkin's book, The Most Dangerous Superstition, is a great little read, a great little starter for a lot of people. But it, it just hammers it hammers the point of authority over and over and over and over and over again. Um, yeah. So it doesn't cover a lot of this. So there, there is a need for this out there, and people, like I said, unfortunately, don't have very long attention spans. So oh. it helps to have, you know, and it, and it's great that, you know, on top of everything else, you're you are, even if you just take the the content of the book, uh, you know, off to the side for a second, just what you did, is putting these ideas into action anyway. You went looking for something, you couldn't find it. You That's couldn't right. find what you looking for so what did you do you created it yourself you found a hole in the market and exactly. you attempted to fill it that okay. is putting these principles into action which I, I think may be an even more important part about this because this is something I preach all the time the whole leading by example thing people say what are you gonna do you know the, the people that complain that they see you on they see you on social media and they're like oh you're not doing anything because you're just on the computer you have no idea what I'm doing outside of being on the computer yeah, and, and yeah the fact that I'm gonna and, say and on an NSA more. controlled internet everything I'm doing yeah but the, not, well, well, see, well, we can't. Yeah, smart. To, well, that, yeah, but we we can't we can't go that route when it comes to me because we all know I'm very vocal about non-compliance and I'm not, I'm not, I don't shy away from that stuff. But just the whole idea that even the people I I never understand why people think that engaging with other people and trying to get them to see things is doing nothing. Um, yeah. But you know, like I said, the, the whole lead by example thing. That's what I do with my business. I found a hole in the market. I filled it. People are like, oh, no, no big deal. No big deal. You go do it. <laughs> I don't understand exactly. why more people aren't. You know, and I'm, you know, I'm glad you brought up uh, Lark Rose and Kokesh too. And uh, they definitely, the other unique thing about my book is that not only is it concise, I mean, it's 300 pages, so it's not the most concise, mm -hmm. but it's broken up in chapters, which each with a, a particular individual topic. So mm -hmm. you don't have to read the whole, you can just read one chapter. That's, you know, the topic you want to learn about. I mean, it's best to start from the beginning because it covers all the foundational stuff first. And there's a logical flow, but still you could be fine just reading one or two chapters. And beyond that, unlike many of the books out there, like from Lark and Rose or from Adam Kokesh or whoever else, they're kind of more geared towards very introductory novice level stuff. It might step to where a novice can learn it, but it provides uh, much more in depth and refined and a rigorous uh, presentation of these ideas. What I'm really trying to do here is bridge the gap between the layman and the scholarly arguments and sophisticated rebuttals that you can find from the Mises Institute. And I think there's a lot of the very beginner stuff, like Larkin Rose's stuff, and there's a lot of the you know advanced stuff in Mises, but there's not a lot of books which kind of bridge that gap. And that's kind of the, the thing I wanted to do. I wanted to bring all the best arguments from the ivory towers of these people down <laughs> to the common man so that he can have access to all of them. Because people want good, detailed, thorough explanations to kind of um, assuage their fears about a stateless society. So I want to give them the best that's out there. I want to make it also very palatable so they can understand it too. Well said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh... I'm I'm also trying to put together something. My wife constantly tells me, "Look at Chase. He wrote a book. What about you? Why don't you write?" 
So you put, you're putting pressure. You're putting pressure on me, Chase. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not. It's not an easy process. And in fact, I had I known how tedious it would be before I started, I might have given it a second thought. I mean, it was. Uh, <laughs> it took about two years to write it, and there's another year to edit it. I mean, my editor was kind of slow, but he was amazing, so it was worth waiting. But still. Uh, it, it's a very, very tedious process, especially if you want to have a book that's very um, researched and everything cited and footnotes and everything. Like you have to be very thorough. And not only that, I wanted to make sure I, I um, covered almost every um, rebuttal from statists or socialists. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just hitting softball arguments. I was hitting the most sophisticated objections to this so that you can really be very compelling to even a very discerning and critical reader. So that takes a long time to get that to kind of fine tune that sort of work. I yeah. I, I can, can only imagine. imagine. <laughs> I, I, I keep I keep I keep complaining about the fact that I haven't gotten around to writing one article I have in the back of my head that I've been saying for <laughs> much, much less a book. Oh gosh, yeah, it's it's tedious, man. It's it really is. It's when I write my when you know when I write my ADD really kicks in, really kicks in. <laughs> really yeah. bad it it kicks in tremendously and i'll be on like 10 tangents before i know it well you know what it's it, it's it's I, like i said i can't even imagine what it would be me like. either that's what i'm saying the fact that you did it it's great and yeah. uh you know what it, it, i mean this goes this actually goes to something another thing dave pre, dave actually preaches all the time about attacking from all angles this is some you know there's people out there writing blogs. There's people out there writing articles. Well, we need some some of the newer pe you know the newer generations to start writing more books. And the whole, I, I like the way that you put it about bridging the gap. I, I actually have have heard that one other time before, but it was about a specific book. Because um, I think uh, I think Robert Murphy is doing something along those lines with mm -hmm. human action. Yeah. Um, well, that's all Adam which... Kokesh did with freedom. Is he took for new liberty and he said, okay, all these big wow. ass words. <laughs> And he squirted it down, and it's. Well, that's, I think but, that's more but, introductory, though, his book, because I read yeah. through most of it. It's, and, you know, it's fine. Oh, it is. It's the basics. No, yeah. no, but that, like, I, like I said, it's the basics. But like, but I also like the way you put it about how you know you, you, you took, essentially higher level stuff, and are, are you're not watering it down, but you're, no, you're just altering the language so it can be understood more. Exactly. More, which is which, which again, short attention spans, but people out there that would be willing to learn if 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 the task didn't seem do so daunting right wonderful wonderful solution so again this is this is needed you know like you know i i poke fun at myself about because i i've been a, a writer of some sorts most of my life i've just gotten lazy with it um but that's why i do the podcast that's why i do the radio show and the freedom fiends now that, that's my outlet now right um but you know what you know I, the three three years you base of your life you basically suck into this man and it's the fact that you got you know, you, that Mises is promoting it. You know, the Mises universe. You know, uh, Mises.org is promoting it for you. That's awesome. That's huge. So yes, it's like, that is right huge. away. It's like, oh my god, that's got to be like a huge payoff. It's like, oh my god, it was worth it. The, the, the oh three yeah, years. It, it was really surreal. And that's great, man. It's, it's, it's really it's, cool. It's a big payoff. It really is. And uh, you know, if I had, if I had to categorize it in any way, it, I'd say it's probably more of an intermediate thing. I mean, anyone, it, it defines and explains everything. But like you said, I, I made sure. The one thing I didn't want to do was water it down. I didn't want to um, compromise the rigor of any of the arguments just to make it more accessible. I want to have the most rigorous arguments and then make it as simple as possible, but not you know compromise the integrity of them. And a lot of books out there, they do, and that's fine because they're catered to a certain demographic. But I want to make sure here's where the critics come, here's where people who are already volunteers to have an issue with being able to explain these things to skeptics or to people who are curious or are even critical, that they can come to here and quickly reference and say, okay, great, this this deals with that, that nuance and that, that hard, difficult question I was struggling with, and great, we, we can move on. Uh, and I feel like the, the reason why there's a lot of tension even within the voluntarist community about certain different ideas, it's really due most of the time to a lack of a refined understanding of a lot of nuances that go into actually applying the NAP and applying property rights. You know, people tend to like say, for instance, I'm against voting, but I don't think it's an NAP violation to vote. I just think it's kind of productive. But you'll have people out there like, well, no, you know, if you vote, then you're stealing people's property, hiring thugs. And no, that's not, <laughs> that's not true. You know, especially if you're voting in self-defense, right? So you have all these misinterpretations and, and issues. So when people, you know, 
go beyond just, okay, NAP, and they want to really get into it, I think they could be a lot more effective at spreading the philosophy. And also, you can avoid a lot of internal conflicts as well. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems to be a hot button issue in our group here lately about voting. And I'm, uh, I take the moral position on voting. So I don't know. Okay. Well, maybe yeah, I mean, there, show we, we can talk about that. And there, we'll there is a pragmatic uh, case, I think, to be made. But I don't think that one, because I believe you're defined by your actions, not what, what, what you say. So, like, I could say I'm a billionaire. I don't have the money, so I'm not a billionaire. So I can say I'm an anarchist and I'm against slavery, but if I vote, I'm propagating slavery. So, I mean, that's kind of my only position on that, but you know, I'm not going to sit here and say, I'll disassociate with you if you vote. I'm not going to sit here and say that. I mean, cause it's, it's a game anyways, like voting is vote. The political system is a game anyways. It's fake. It doesn't matter. What's going to get passed through is going to get passed through. As soon as you right. hear, as soon as you hear a law, what happens is, is they try to sell it to the public. The public goes, no, we don't like this law. And they go, okay, well, we won't do it. And then it gets thrown into the back page of some 10,000 page bill and it gets passed. So yeah. this whole democracy and voting and stuff to me is just a big, like to argue about it. It is, it's like, does God exist? We can't prove it. So why are we arguing about it? Does voting matter? We can't prove it. So why argue about it? Well, I, th I think and I'm against voting uh, for practical reasons. But I think that voting, the main purpose of it, the true purpose of it from the state's perspective is to uphold its perceived legitimacy, which is really the source of its power, because the more voter participation you have, the easier it is for them to make the seemingly plausible case that, hey, we're just carrying out the will of the people. We're not actually asserting our aggressive will over you violently. And so I think even if you win a battle, like you lower attacks, you lo you're losing on the war because you're giving them, you're amping up the very source of their power, which is that sanction of the victim, kind of like what Ayn Rand talked about. You know, you're, you're providing the sanction of the victim by voting. You're, you're making it seem like that. You're upholding its legitimacy. So you're against or for yeah. voting? I'm against it practically. I don't think it's a rights violation if you vote. I don't think it's an AP violation if you vote, which I think many do, but I am against it for practical reasons. I think it's kind of productive and you can do a lot better things with your time than, than voting. I like, I like uh, Charles Bukowski's uh, quote on, on voting, which is the uh, difference between a di dictatorship and a democracy is in, uh, in democracy you vote now and take orders later, in democracy you skip the voting part and <laughs> just take orders. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. So it's, it's a farce. It's, well, it's you a, know, yeah, like you said, it's I, would prefer a, I would prefer a, a dictatorship or a monarchy to a democracy because the, the, the monarchy, right. whatever... You, they actually have some sort of vested interest in maintaining the capital value yeah. of the yeah. resources sort of that fact, they're over. Because yeah, right. they, they can actually yeah. transfer it to their children. And, and right. They have, yeah. and they have but, vested interest in making as much money and in being as powerful as possible. Right. And, they and they if you're one of their subjects. They don't want to exploit all their resources. Right? They don't want to exploit their resources. They don't want to totally devalue the land they have dominion over. But if it's democracy, you're a uh, president in there for four or eight years or a legislator. Your incentive isn't to preserve the capital value at all. You just want to exploit as much as possible to buy the votes and political. It's the things. tragedy of commons applied to politics. Exactly, exactly. So, <laughs> That's exactly what it me, is. It's like it's like anarchy is the best. Then like some sort of monarchy or something. Then democracy. I mean, if the worst. I do, I do need free labor at the house. I can be your king if you want to come down and maybe pick some vegetables and stuff for me. <laughs> I, if you if you're down for that, I'm, I mean, whatever. But I got an anarchy household, and that's the best. So. There's no punishment for not doing your job. You just you gotta leave. <laughs> oh no! But uh, uh, I really appreciate you coming on, Chase. Man, this has been a fun discussion. I think we had a we we, we learned a lot about what you're doing uh, up in Asheville, right? And uh, we're we learned about your book a lot. And I, I really appreciate you writing uh, stuff for especially like people that that maybe jumped in the boat and then like, what do we do? <laughs> it's uh it's kind of one of those situations uh they they maybe uh like all the ideas but uh, aren't really concrete in it i see that a lot and you know i still learn stuff every day i'm not saying i'm an aficionado or some kind of expert of any sort i'm just saying every day i'm like wow i learned something new i didn't think of that that way like today like the, i was i read an article about uh basically in japan they're like they're wondering why no one wants to have sex and I don't know if it's like a market correction on population or if it's a government psyop 
or if it's just the legal system has made it to where men are like, fuck off. I don't know. But in Japan, they aren't having babies right now. It's insane. So I don't know what it is. It's too, much, too much anime. That's, that's the problem. So I, I learn something new every day. I, I, I ponder <laughs> yeah. something new every day. So. All right. All right. Well, yeah, uh, if anyone wants to know, learn more about uh, the Voluntarist Initiative, they want to live somewhere with a bunch of other voluntarists and people who are friendly towards peaceful parenting. They don't have to be a parent. Singles are welcome, too, obviously. And uh, you just want to live in the community and not be outcasted, uh, then please check us out at tbiofavl.org. And uh, you can find my YouTube videos on uh, ANCAP Radio. Just type that into YouTube, or my handle is ANCAP Chase. And then you can do an Amazon or Mises search for a spontaneous order for my book. Cool deal, man. I can't uh, can't wait to see what the future holds for the uh, Voluntarist Initiative. If you were a little bit further oh. south, I would very consider it. I would consider it. But... Further south? Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No way. I'm not... Very much. <laughs> I'm not... He's a Bama boy. He I'm not going. Want... I'm he's not a... going he's up north. He's a Bama nationalist. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> oh my but God. I, I was just going to say, D Danilo, you went down and visited him down there, didn't you? And, of course. Uh, I saw him. I saw yeah. Dave. I saw Chase, uh, Chase in the flesh. It was really, really a great time I had meeting everyone there. It's a, it's a really uh, unusual thing to be surrounded by volunteers. It's like, uh, I think like the way Jason Hume, he was telling me how it's like, you know, you, you just get used to it, and then when you leave it and you go somewhere else where <laughs> you can't talk about, you know, you can't just imply that they understand taxation of theft, you know. <laughs> They're like, what? Wait, what, wait, what'd you just say? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you're on different wavelengths, man. I, when I right. hang around people, I'm like, I, football, let's talk about football. <laughs> yeah, yeah when, once you come and you're in this environment, you, you can't can't really leave again you know <laughs> it's 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 like that <laughs> See, and that's why people think it's a cult that's all it is you're just you've become, <laughs> you've become inculcated to the bull crap the bullshit you just what did i like, say I what did i say yesterday <laughs> yeah we're a cult we want you to own yourself and leave us the fuck alone <laughs> <laughs> right, that is that's 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 the name of our cult. <laughs> um, you know, it, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's great what you're doing. I've I, I've said a couple of times that I want to get down there. Unfortunately, I have other issues going on with my family situation that has prevented me from doing that. Um, but I need to get the hell out of New York. Um, oh, God, and, get your uh, family out of New York. Yeah, again. yeah, I'm up here with the Delo, which is. Um, you know, we're, that's we're right, you're both there. Yeah, I'm, we're, I'm we're contemplating, forest, I'm contemplating of, of trying to get fire. farming community going. But uh, no, I, Jeremy, Jeremy, we're both living in the city. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, according, yeah, according to Dave, everything within the within the New York State boundaries. If you were, if you saw it from my eyes, uh, and and if you walked outside and looked around your street, you would say that's the city. I can go on my front porch and piss off piss off of it right now, and no one will see it. So. Uh, Oh, I was going to say, nobody can see it. I, I could do it, too. I don't, you know. And I was talking about my dick. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to leave that. Oh, uh, are we done with that? Or is that, is that, is that we end the show on that, right? Yeah. No, the, wrap us up, Danilo. Let's get uh, out of here. I got food waiting on me. I'm starving. I, I just, anyway, I just, I, one of these days, I'm definitely going to get down there to visit you, visit you guys. Because uh, I think it's great. I, I wish... I wish, you know, e even if it's not your particular group, I wish more people were taking, you know, I mean, I know there's a, there's smaller groups here and there, and then people talk about the Free State Project, which I think is just a horror, uh, uh, just a very confused group of people. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I... And there I, goes I all there of our Free State people. Project I mean, I keep, guests. I, I, keep try, I keep trying to, I keep trying to get that we haven't had <laughs> um, I keep trying to, I keep trying to get people interested about doing stuff around here, and they just look at me funny, and I'm just like, yeah, it's... Well, I need to get out of here, but I think it's great. I wish more people would do it. Um, and uh, again, just the, the whole leading by example thing, that's all you're doing. And, you know, you said it earlier that you guys, you, you refuse to get involved in the political stuff and you're just doing, which is, that's exactly what needs to be done. All you got to do is, is show people a better way. And all the, those little followers out there that are, just, that are just clamoring for a leader, they'll just come along for the ride, man. <laughs> <laughs> so all we gotta do is just show them, hey, you can do this without government. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solved. So. Excellent. Uh, this has been a great talk. It's uh, it was good. We finally got you on, man. Uh, I, I appreciate it. You coming on as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And you know, feel free to invite me some future time. I'd like to come on again. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome, cool, Chase. Man. Thanks a lot for the conversation. So please, everybody, um, search for his book, A Spontaneous Order. I think you'll love it. I'm. Uh, 
I'm about three quarters of the way through it. I thoroughly enjoy it. It's uh, to me, it's kind of a eerily similar of a of a, of a Rothbardian tone, the, the way you write, which is pretty awesome. Um, and, and so I really, I really encourage people to to check it out. Um, you know, if you're just new to the ideas, I think it'll help solidify them in your mind. Uh, you got a really clear and precise way of describing the the topic. So, so it's really good. So if anybody wants to help us out. Um, you can donate uh, PayPal or Patreon. Oh, sorry, no, not PayPal. Bitcoin, Bitcoin or Patreon. Patreon.com slash Seeds of Liberty to help us out. We love ha having a, a wonderful guest like uh, like Chase here, and we want to do more of it. So monetary compensation is always appreciated and encouraged. So um, thanks a lot, everyone, uh, for a great conversation. So this is the Seeds of Liberty podcast. Uh, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take Peace. care. Bye. Peace. Google volunteerism. <laughs>